So firstly, I want everyone to hold their hand on their right hand on their heart and say, Lord, open my eyes, open my ears, and open my heart in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The message I've titled tonight is State of Heart. State of Heart. And everyone knows, everybody knows the scripture in Matthew 22, 37 to 38. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love your neighbour as yourself. I want to concentrate on that. Love your neighbour as yourself. The Lord's telling you that, to love all your neighbours. Not just the neighbour that you go and have coffee with. Not just the one you always go hang out with and you get along with. He's talking about the neighbour that persecutes you. He's talking about the neighbour or, or maybe the boss or the foreman that's always speaking down at you. That's who he's talking about, to love all your neighbours. Amen? All of your neighbours. But he's instructing, us, he's instructing us to love all of your neighbours. You wouldn't be living a full, fruitful life with brothers and sisters in church, in your workplace, or with friends and family, if you have not experienced here it is, offence. Everyone say offence. Offence is the biggest bait of Satan. It's the biggest bait of Satan. It has been for decades. For decades, all through the church, offence will rob you and stop you from the promises that the Lord has in your life. Offence can rise up through many things. Through... Uh, Losing your job. You can rise up with bitterness and offence and you can hold it. Offence can rise up when, when even when you, uh, people come and go. So you'll have relationships that will close, that will, God will purposely shut the door on that relationship. Why? Because God has a bigger door for you. God has a bigger promise and a bigger purpose in your life. Don't allow when one door shuts, just know this, that God has a bigger, a, a bigger door, a bigger promise, a bigger plan for your life. Don't hold on to that offence. It'll stop it. It'll stop you from going where God wants you to go. You can't escape it. It's going to happen. So God wants you to move on quickly. Forgive quick, Amen. You could have been hurt by a harsh word spoken, as I shared, with trust being broken, or even the extreme hurts like abuse and rejection. In my life, I've experienced a lot of abuse when I was young. I got hurt by a particular person that wasn't a blood related, but related through marriage. And this person has gone, has gone, has left this left this world a long time ago. He, he, he left this world in a, in, a, in a violent and cruel situation. But this person hurt me when I was a child. And when he had left, when he had left this world, um, I had a phone call of family members and all happy, oh, this guy's gone, the unsafe family members, this guy's gone expecting me to rejoice. Now I have forgiven this man for the G Man program a very long time ago. Never seen him, never forgiven him to his face, but I forgave him that way. And when that and when that phone call happened, I turned around to the family member. I said, you know, I I, I, I love this person. I said, I've already forgiven him. I've already moved on. Even though he had died in a terrible, terrible, terrible way, he was a cruel man. He was. He was a very bad man, never knew the Lord. And, and that was one of the things, when I did that on that phone call, it took such a hardness off my heart 
And it just gave me a relief. There was such a release and just a heaviness that left me. But no matter how severe or how little the hurt might be, the way you act and react should always be the same. We need to forgive. We need to forgive. In Matthew 18, 21, 22, it says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. So Jesus is telling us to forgive 77 times. Not just that one time, uh, He's telling us to forgive. Pretty much this Scripture is telling you to move on quick. Forgive and move on from it. Don't hold it. Because if you hold it, that offence, that hurt, that abuse or whatever it may be, it's going to keep you from going to that big door that God has for you. There's a promise and a purpose through that door. And a lot of us here today are holding something that's holding us back from the promise that He has for your life. And it's the hurt, it's the unforgiveness, it's the bitterness. But God, I'm here to tell you tonight, God wants you to be released from that unforgiveness right now. God wants you to be released from that unforgiveness, that hurt, that hardness, because all it's doing, it's bad for your heart and it's bad for your health. And it's just like strangling your heart and you need to release. And God tonight, I believe, will do that. Amen? God tonight is going to do that. Why is forgiveness so important? Why is it so important? I have three points tonight to help us explain why it's so important. Christ has forgiven you. Christ has forgiven you. So you need to forgive. He died for us. In in Ephesians, Paul told the people to get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Everyone say forgive. Forgive. Forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. Just as Christ God forgave you. Our bodies are a temple. Our bodies are a temple. It's not always the poison or the drugs or everything that we put in that poisons that temple. It's the bitterness, it's the anger, it's the sin that we carry. When we fall in the sin, we start to walk in, you start to feel shameful, so you start to hold back, you stop going to a service or you stop going to a fellowship and you stop fellowshipping with God, just like Adam and Eve in the garden. Adam and Eve in the garden, you remember what it says in the Bible when God was walking in the cool of the day. Adam and Eve was chilling out, hanging out with God in the garden, talking to God, fellowshipping with God. And then what happened? The next day he was chilling, walking, he was looking for him. Where are you? Where are you? God does, God's intention is not for you to hide from Him. God's intention is for you to run to Him. We are meant to run to God, not hide from God. That's what we're meant to do. That intention, it was to, if Adam and Eve just ran out and said, here I am, God, forgive me, I ate from the tree. They didn't, they hid in shame. And this is what a lot of Christians today, we are hiding in shame. We are not stepping out because you're worried about what that person's thinking. You're worried about what that person's thinking. Don't worry about what that person's thinking. Worry about what God thinks. Worry about the promise and the purpose that God has for your life. He shut one door, but He's opened another door for your life. Amen? We need to worry about what God thinks, not what people think. Forgiveness isn't pretending that it didn't hurt and didn't happen. Forgiveness is looking hard at the fact that it did happen and making a conscious choice. Everyone say choice. To set it aside so then it won't come between you and God. We have a choice. We have a choice whether we, whether we sit here and forgive or uh, sit here and forgive and move on to that big door that's open, that promise that God has, or we got a choice to sit and be hurt and bitter and anger and then you fall into sickness and things are not good when that happens. You lose relationships, people that love you. You hurt them. Hurt, Pastor Sean said it, hurt people hurt people. 
Hurt people hurt people. We need to love people. We need to forgive quick. And I'll tell you, the way we can forgive quick is when we come in here on a Sunday, when we lift our hands up in worship, when we praise the Lord Jesus, our Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, the week that we had, we come in on a Sunday. This is why church is meant to be, so we can worship, so we can just hold our hands up and release everything from the past week and just release it to God. This is what keeps our heart pure. Amen? This is what keeps our heart pure. Mark eleven twenty five. And whatever and whenever you stand up to pray, if you have something against anyone, forgive so that your Father in heaven may forgive you of your wrongdoings. Point number two. Forgiveness will set you free. Who believes forgiveness will set you free? Yes. To forgive is to set the prisoner free. And to discover that the prisoner is you. That the prisoner is you. What will, set, what will it set you free from? Fear, doubt, fear and doubt. This is the problem. We start to doubt and we stop listening to the godly counsel. We start to doubt, we start to walk in fear we start to stop listening to the godly counsel. We got to stop listening to the 10 spies. We need to be starting to listen to the two, to the 12, the, the Joshua and Caleb. They walked in there with confidence, courage, and I can guarantee they weren't walking in unforgiveness. They walked in there with confidence and boldness in God. The 10 walked in there with fear. All they seen was the giants. All they seen was the negative. All they seen was the things that they, that they were scared of because of the fear. But Joshua and Caleb walked in and all they seen was the beautiful mountains, the beautiful green trees, the honey, the sweet honey, all these things. That's all they seen because they walked in God's holiness. Amen. They walked in. They, I can guarantee they never had no bitterness. What else does it set you free from? Anger and bitterness, sickness, Everyone knows a little bit, a few of you know the, uh, the te- uh, story, uh, not story, uh, my father that passed away. Um, he died of cancer. But on that, the moment I got the phone call that my dad had cancer and he had so long, he didn't have long to live. I was talking to my brother and he told me, dad's dying, he's only got so many weeks to live. I... <laughs> I come in, I spoke to the team. I, I, I didn't feel anything. I hadn't seen him for 18 years. I didn't feel nothing. There was, I come into the team. Anyway, after that, I, I, the next day I come in and I was in the office and I was with uh, Pastor Shane, Pastor Eric and Kelly. And we're there and I just come in. I said, I, said, I just found out my dad had cancer and he's only got so much to live. I said, I said I, is it normal? I don't feel emotion. I don't feel... So we were talking a little bit and then, and then Kelly said, Kelly said, why don't we pray? And then Pastor Eric and Pastor Shane and Kelly, they came over, they put their hands on me. And as they laid their hands on me and Eric started to pray and all of a sudden I felt this warmth. I felt something just, ru- just warm through my body and I just put my head down and I started weeping. And then Pastor Shane started praying. And then I started weeping more. And then Kelly, and then we're all, they're all praying their hands on me. And then I, just something happened to, in my heart. Something here, I felt it. And then after we finished, I was going to an appointment. We finished up. And after I finished, I was going to an appointment. So I jumped in the car and I was heading down to an appointment. And so, because the day before I rang my brother, he must have thought I was so cold. So I rang my brother. I said, bro, I said, you forgive me, man. I said, uh, yesterday, I, w- I said, it's hit me today, man. I said, I come into my family. They prayed with me. And I said, the Holy Spirit done something in me soul. He did something. And I believe he took that little bit of unforgiveness away. So I spoke to my brother. I cried on the phone. I wept with him. I hung up. I said, Alan, I want to go see dad. Where is he? What hospital is he in? Let me ring you back, he says. He hangs up. He, say, he rings me back. He said, he's up to Woomba, but in a couple of days, he's going to Warwick. 
And he said, uh, Catherine, uh, the girlfriend, and uh, they said, uh, don't bother coming up. Just go out to see him at Worry. How many of us know when someone says no, it's just like, <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. So I hung the phone up and the Holy Spirit's like, get in the car and go to Toowoomba Hospital. So it me and my brother got in the car, I mean my son got in the car and we went to uh, Toowoomba Hospital. I walked into the emergency straight in and I, and I went up behind the curtains and I seen my dad sitting there and I walked up, I hugged him. I hadn't seen him for 18 years. Spoke to him on the phone once, many years ago when I was doing the G-Men program. I, I was talking to him on the phone in that 18 years. I think it was three years after I was saved and I asked him to forgive me. I mean, I, I, I forgave him on the phone but there was still that bitterness. So when I walked into the hospital, I sat down, I wept with him, I cried with him. The first thing he said to me, he said, son, I see everything on social media. He said, I'm proud of you. He said, he said, he said, if I'm going, son, he said, I wanna know that Jesus, you know. And I stood there and I wept with him and I prayed the salvation prayer. Anyway, so that happened, I prayed and we left. And then one Sunday I got the news that Dad was only hours to go. It was only a couple of weeks later, I think it was, three weeks later. He had, he had so many hours to go. I jumped in the car from here, the team took over everything and I jumped in the car and I drove. And when I was driving, there was so much memories happening, just the good times with Dad. And I really believe it was meant, before I got there, I'd already seen him, but it was meant to be. Because I had that reconciliation in the hospital. I jumped in the car on Sunday. I get closer and closer and I'm about 20 minutes away and I get the phone call that he's gone from Morwick. But I still kept driving because God wanted reconciliation with my sisters. God wanted, recon wanted the job wasn't done. He wanted me to get there and I hugged Catherine that we didn't get along with, my dad's girlfriend. And I walked straight into that room and I hugged Catherine. I gave her a big hug and we wept together. And it brought reconciliation back to the family. And, it, and it, it, that's what the power of the Holy Spirit, that's what He does. God wanted me completely set free, not partly set free, amen? Point number, two, number three, forgiveness is the highest, most beautiful form of love. In return, you will receive untold peace and happiness. Everyone might know the story of Corey Ten Boom. After the defeat of Hitler's Nazi regime in World War II, Holocaust survivor and Christian Corey Ten Boom returned to Germany to declare the, for, uh, the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. One evening after preaching her message on forgiveness, she was approached by a man who identified himself as a former Nazi guard from the concentration camp where she had been and held and where her sister Betsy had died. When Corey saw this man's face, she recognised him as one of the most cruel and harsh guards from the camp. He, uh, he reached out his hand and said, said to her, a fine message, Corey. How good is it to know that, as you say, all our sins are at the bottom of the sea. I was a guard at that camp you speak of, and I would like to hear, hear it from your lips. Will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? Can you imagine? She's... She's out this, I don't know, at a church or a, or a conference or whatever, and she's preaching. And after she preaches on forgiveness, here's this guy that comes up. He was one of the soldiers that everyone knows in World War II would have been cruel. You know, her sister died in there, so it would have been, they would have been starved. This guard was all part of that. And, and he holds out his hand and says, will you forgive me? How hard would that have been? And it felt like, she said it felt like hours, but it was seconds. It felt like hours, but Corey, Corey wrote, this is what she wrote. As she reached out her hand to the former guard, Corey says that something incredible took place. The current started in my shoulder. 
raced down my arm, sprung into my hands, and then healing warmth seemed to flood my whole being. Tears to my eyes, I forgive you, brother, I cried. With all my heart, I had never known love so intensely as I did then. But even then, I realised it was not my love, it was the power of the Holy Spirit. It was the power of the Holy Spirit that just set her free. God did just, if the worship team can come up, God did not want her partially uh, healed. He wanted her fully healed from that situation. Same as with me and my father. God didn't want me just, you know, to forgive a little. He wanted me to completely, to be completely set free from it. Same as with her. God wants us to be set free from all these things in our lives. Matthew 6, 14. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. He will also forgive you. I want to encourage you guys and we'll go and, and I love the last couple of messages last week Pastor Josiah shared and I love that what, what he said. There's one thing he said that really stood out to me. When you pray, you go to God. But when you worship, God comes to you. When you worship, God comes to you. We need to be a church of worshippers. When we go through something, when we worship, something happens, something shifts, something penetrates, all this hardness starts to move, our ears start to open, our eyes start to open for the Word, to, word of God, Amen. But too many times the hurt, too many times offence, all these areas, the, the, the anger, the unforgiveness, all these areas wants to come in and it wants to bring bitterness in to stop you from the promise and the purpose and the things that God has for your life. There's so much more than staying in the one spot. There's so much more. There's things God has closed so many doors on me, so many doors on me, I could have easily be offended. Easily. But I knew that I knew that I knew that God has a plan for my life and He's going to open up a bigger door. When I got asked, when I was working in pastoral area down at youth, Pastor Josiah, and Pastor Josiah was stepping up and he had to move on. When I was down there and then Pastor Josiah and Pastor Sean approached me about starting a young adult, part of me wanted to stay there. I was comfortable. Part of me is like, oh man, that door's closing. But I knew God got, had a bigger door for me. I knew God had a plan. I knew God had a promise and a plan and a purpose. Now I could have been held up with unforgiveness. I could have rose up with offence. I could have rose up with all these things, but I didn't allow it because I focused on Him and His promise. And it's just like you, there's a lot of you here wondering what's the next step? Where am I going from here? I'm in this spot, this door's just closed and I'm so angry, but there's this door that's there. It's a bigger door, it's a bigger promise, it's a bigger plan, it's a bigger purpose for your life, but you're just holding on to the bitterness. You're holding on to the unforgiveness. You're holding on to this hurt. And God says, give it to me in worship. Give it to me in worship. It mightn't be, you might be struggling tonight. You might be struggling with a small offence. There's some of us that might have been in abuse like I was abused. There's some of us that might have been hurt from, from an, an old employee that fired you and you're still dwelling on it. You're still sitting on it. But God is to say that I've got a better position for you. I've got a better job for you. I've got a better place for you. Tonight is the night for you to release. Tonight is the night for you to release. And I'll tell you why. In Romans 12, 1, it says this, Therefore, brothers, everyone say brothers, by the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. This is your spiritual worship. So as the team play, let that healing rain come down. Don't fear. What does that song say? 
Let the healing rain fall down. Let the healing rain fall down. Can you just play that? And allow the Holy Spirit to move. Let that healing rain come down and lift your hands up. Whether it's a father like I had a father that never was here for me. Come down and open your heart up to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to move in your life. Allow Him to shift something in your spirit. Forgiveness, forgiving others, forgiving others, not because they always deserve it, but you most certainly deserve peace. You most certainly deserve peace, amen. Father God, I pray right now over every being in this house, Father, that You just comfort them, nurture them and continue to do Your will in their lives. I pray, Lord, that, Lord, Lord, I know that Dr. Jesus showed up tonight and I know something shift and something moved in the heart. And I thank You and I give You the glory, Father. I give You the glory for that. I thank You for the opportunity that You gave me to share. I thank You for everything You're doing within our church and churches around us. But most importantly, I thank You, Holy Spirit, that You are the Counsellor. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I thank You for that, Lord. In Jesus' Name. If you're here with every head bowed and eyes closed right now, I wanna encourage you, if you don't know Jesus or you're being away from the Lord, if you're online and you've been away from the Lord, I wanna encourage you, tonight's the night where you can change that. You can come back to the Lord. Or if you don't know this Jesus I'm talking about and you've struggled in unforgiveness, you've struggled with an area where it's abuse or whatever it may be, tonight's the night to give your heart to Him. So everyone say this after me, say, Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I thank You that You died on that cross and three days later You rose again. So I thank You for Your grace. I thank You for Your mercy. In Jesus' Name I pray. And everyone says,